Hello everybody and welcome to a new video for Luck Poker. Today I am going to play two tables at NL25 Zoom and I am going to try to explain all my thinking processes. Let's start the action and let's speak a bit about the field. So NL25 is of course part of the micro stakes. Therefore, I will play probably pretty far from optimal uh, because I think there are some exploits we should uh, take advantage of. And uh, I will also play kind of a tight aggressive preflop because the uh, rake is pretty high. This means that I'm going to triple more, call call less, and uh, I can also typically be more aggressive because my opponent will uh, respond passively to my aggression. Having said that, I will not exaggerate out of position and I will try to build the biggest spot when I am in position. King Queen off, I will open 3x given the big blind is a recreational player. This is not my standard opening size from here, but I like to make it bigger when there is a bad player on the big blind. I get a 3 bet and that's just gonna be a fold. So we have King Queen suited on the right table and I'm going to open 3x for the reasons I mentioned previously and I'm going to call call this ace man suited in this multi-way pot with two recreational players. The flop is pretty bad and I'm just going to check fold. And also here I think in a three-way pot I will just check back and try to improve my equity. Uh, if I was heads up I would say it would be okay to bet sometimes, especially versus a bad player. But versus two of them, I don't think I have enough full equity or equity to make a bet profitable. And we just follow, of course, on the pot bet. <coughs> on table one, we have ace four suited, and I am going to trade by this recreational player. My goal here is, of course, to isolate myself with him. Uh, I expect him to four bet less frequently than a regular, and if he does, he probably he has a pretty strong hand. This flop is not bad. I am just going to bet on the flop with my open and this trade row. I will keep the pressure on on this 10, and I will shove many rivers. Uh, this definitely, I think I can shove. And it's nice. On table two on the right, I am going to open a six suited. The villain makes three bets. He's not playing full stack, and if he's not playing full stack, I'm just going to fold this hand. Uh, I don't have many info. Uh, probably it's not a regular actually, because he would have probably uh, played full stack if he was a uh, reg. And I think folding there is just the best option. On table one, we are on the big blind with seven nine suited. We have a limper on the button. If I had a good hand, I would raise, but you know, uh, I would raise only to get more value. We are already isolated, so we're already playing heads up. There is no need to build the pot with a weak hand. And I'm going to bet my my gut shot. Uh, I'm gonna lead out with that. And we hit this. And I think versus a bad player, we should bet pretty big here. Also, check raising is a nice. I think check raises maybe. Uh, a bit better because we can build a bigger pot if he bets. And I think he's gonna bet most of his kings or and big hands. So I'm just gonna check raise. Betting big was an option as well. It was actually my first idea. Uh, but uh, once uh, once I realized I have the nut, I think it's uh, more profitable and we can win more if we just check raise. On the river, I'm going to bet the pot. I think on the river he's going to call me. I mean, if if I bet big, I think I can bet I can bet as big as pot and still get value. If he has nothing, he's going to fold to any size. So since we don't care about being balanced at all, I would just go for the bigger size. I expect him to call. King five suited. Uh, I'm just gonna fold to this big open raise. I would say three betting. It wouldn't be terrible in position versus a bad player especially if it's smaller than that, but when he makes it this big and this one full stack, I think it's just better to fold. 7-8 suited, once again, no need to triple this one, we are already isolated with this guy and we're just happy to play with him. Uh, Post-flop, I'm going to check hold my mid-value hand on the flop, unless he makes some weird thing like overbetting and so on. 
gonna call the first one, even if I'm not in love with the sizing he used. Gonna check here if he bets huge and just gonna fold my hand. To this size, it's a bit closer. I think if he had something really, really cool, like two per plus or an over pair, he would probably bet bigger here. Uh, but I think it's just better to fold here, this kind of hand. Here we can three bet the six, seven suited in position uh, versus Finland. I am going to fold to a 4-bet, since this guy so far is playing on the tight side. We have King 10 suited on table 2. It's definitely a hand we might 3-bet, and that's what I'm gonna do here. Uh, again, in case of 4-bet, I'm just gonna fold. I think in the field, especially the micros, it's okay if you fold a bit more to 4-bet, especially uh, when you're out of position, because, you know, people just 4-bet less than they should. And on this terrible board, I'm just going to check fold. I'm not gonna fight with air on a board like this in a spot like this. Jack on the turn, I think it's okay to check. Might choose to bluff on the river if he checks back. Still close. And this, I think we can both bet smaller check. But I can also bet on the medium, some medium size bet. I think it's gonna be okay. It's very difficult for him to have something better than us. I think if he had jacks or a set, he would have bet flop or turn. Uh, the only best, better hand he could have, I think, is a king with, with a better kicker. Uh, and I don't think anybody's going to raise that. So I think uh, uh, bet calling was, was a good option there. <clears throat> we open 3x on table 1, given the big, the big blind is a recreational player, and we are probably going to defend on the table 2 versus the same player. Might be a bad regular more than a recreational player, but we will see. We flop a, a decent board, I think it's okay to have a dunk betting grand sometimes on a board like this, but I'm going to check call versus this specific opponent, and I am going to see bit instead this hand with my back doors. Check cool, that was cool. The four uh, is a card which help a bit our range. Villain really shouldn't have a six that much, but I think with a seven, there is no need to bluff this end. So I will, I will still check all and he shoves, which <laughs> is a pretty weird line, definitely from a recreational. So I think the tag was fine. Let's open this ace for offsuite and see if you get some action. Small blind calls. Seems like a bad player. We also have queen 10 suited on table 2, which is a hand which we'll probably be able to play very frequently. We felt like I shot in this railway pot. It's kind of dry. We have a pretty good hand to see, but I think. <clears throat> Even if you are in a railway pot, we have good blockers and good equity. And I am going to open also this ace for suited. Spade, spade. Milan calls the queen hits, which is of course a good card in general. I am going to bet again, and I am also going to bet this ace4 for thin value and protection. Versus a bad player, I don't mind betting small again here, because I I rather bet twice small than check back and having to face a decision on the river, especially when I expect my opponent to play very straightforward and don't bluff that much when I bet. He has many draws he can still call with, and if he falls, we are happy, so I think betting there is very profitable in general. Let's open these pocket nines. I usually open 2x from UTG and middle position. Button calls, who is a bad player. I think we can do many things here. Betting small versus a bad player is okay. Uh, we can potentially bet small two or three times there. And it's probably better than checking and starting a guessing game. It's for suited. I'm going to call versus UTG with not that many info. Uh, we are probably going to check all this flop, unless we bet something weird. King Jack. 
<clears throat> might favorite my cold call. I don't mind cold calling given that both big blinds are uh, weak players and the original raise are kind of tight. So uh, I prefer to play with them than to three button isolate myself with the with the your with the original razor. I'm going to check call on the flop, but probably check fold on this turn, unless he bets very small. And the king jack, I think in a four way pot, we should just check and try to get more equity. The jack is nice. It's a nice turn. I think the original razor would probably bet if he had a queen, and uh, uh, I don't mind this small bet from my opponents. Uh, I think I have, a, unless he has exactly ace jack, I think I, I have a better hand than uh, the original razor, uh, but I don't like the idea of raising and building a huge pot there, so I'm just gonna call. One fourth bet, uh, it's probably gonna be a call. Uh, they might have a queen, but the price is very nice, and if they didn't have a queen, I probably had the best hand, so I'm gonna call. But, well, one hand is jack, one the queen, so <laughs> not that nice. Check seven suited. Uh, it's a hand and definitely opening. Blind versus blind versus a bad player. Uh, this flop it. We may do many things: betting, check calling, check raising. I like them both. Uh, I mean, I like all of them, and I always start with the bet this time. The check is a nice turn. I think betting uh, uh, again is the best option with the equity we have. I wouldn't bet small to be honest. And I think we can value by the river. If he has a uh, 10, he might choose to call anyway. So check calling also was a nice option, of course. But having two spades and blocking many of his potential busted rows, I prefer to value bet than to than to check and hoping he has a, a straight row. We are going to open this a 8 suited. Button calls, and he is a recreational. Uh, we hit a very nice board. Uh, I am going to bet small. The bad thing about boards, boards like this is that it's not that easy to get value. Uh, I'm gonna bet again on the turn, increasing a bit the sizing. Queen 10 off, we may choose to over limp in this situation. Uh, I don't mind to limp on the small blind when there are, when, when there are other limps. Uh, we get a very cheap shot at the pot, which is always nice. We open King 8. Received two calls from two recreational players, and given that there are that they are bad players and the board is kind of connected, and then don't block any draw, I think I'm just gonna bet big with my top pair and good kicker. They both call, 7 is so so. Uh, I'm still gonna bet. Of course, they may have a seven, but they still can. They still have many draws. The four hits, not a nice card because five six gets there, and uh, he still may have a seven. This is a very sick spot because you know many draws are uh, didn't hit, and many others did. So. I think it's uh, uh, it's really all about how much you expect him to bluff in this situation, and I think it's it's all about the player. We don't have many infos, unluckily, and I think we should probably just fold in these situations more often than not when it's close. A seven off. We will open from the button. We get a call from the big blind, and uh, we may mix this hand. I'm gonna check back this time. And I'm gonna check back also on the on the turn, trying to get to show them with my case high. And um, as said, as I said, I'm trying to get to show them and check back. Nice. We can limp this, but it's not that bad. The flop also is not that bad, and we may do many things. I don't mind betting. <clears throat> I will probably mix this hand, sometimes but sometimes check. Ace 3, we are going to open it 3x, and let's see with this queens if, I, if I'm going to be able to, to make a 3-bet versus this bad player. Yes, I am. I'm going to see bet versus this uh, player. I'm gonna make it about half pot, 
I think it's the right, right size in versus a pair like this. And here I am going to bet about 10, 11. Again, versus versus pet players, my sizing is completely exploitative, depending on how much value I expect to be able to get from them. I'm going to bet pretty big here because I think he may have many uh, hands that are difficult to fold from a bad player. And the river is not the best, of course, but I'm still gonna tin shove. Uh, I'm not gonna check call, of course, uh, but tin shove I think is fine. We block queen 10, which is one of his main value hands, unlike in the, he had a set all the way long, so not much to do there, but I still like the, the shove. I, I would still do it. Let's bet we take check here with our gut shot. Blair raises huge, which is gonna fold. We have now Ace King that we are going to tribute. As well as we're going to open A6 off. Nice flop and versus a probably bad player, I'm going to size it up a bit compared to my standard. He just folds. I'm going to see with this a6 off, check back this turn versus a regular and call the river if he checks. Uh, once uh, if he bets, once he checks, I think is close between uh, betting or checking. There isn't much value to, to get to be honest with this hand with no kicker, so I'm just gonna check. And we are going to open pocket uses. We isolate with King Queen, trying to play heads up with a limper. That would be nice. Unlikely the big plane calls and this flop hits. Uh, I would still place a Sivet here. We, I will fire some turns. No need of that. King 9 suited. We are going to open it from the UTG. We get a call from the small blind, who is a recreational player, and from the big blind, uh, we can both better check. I am going to bet this combo. About half pot, I think is the best size. We are ready, of course, to call a raise. If this happens, it does not, and I am going to bet this. We can use multiple sizings, probably this small one is best versus a regular. Okay. Let's open the skin queen. 3x given the blind. Middle position calls, small blind calls, and that's a very nice flop. I'm going to put a half pot. I think if they have a pair, they're going to call this pet almost always. Not the best turn, but still, I am going to value bet, and we will judge on the river if to fire again or not. <coughs> he folds, so nothing to get there. I like to bet big on that turn because, you know, if he had a pair plus a diamond, he would still call no matter what. And if he has a king as well, and if he has a king, it's likely worse than ours. We open pocket nines versus this bad player. I am going to bet the flop 14 value. Well, no, apparently I'm not, and I'm just going to fold this shove. We call versus the same player, king to off, it's gonna be close, folding would be terrible as well, but I think in position we have some edge here. Uh, it checks, and considering that typically players here do not balance that much, I think it's better to just, it's safer to just bet on the flop and getting value from all his mid pairs. Of course if you expect him to be balanced once he checks there, we should be more careful with the perno kicker on a board like that because you know we he has better kings and he will certainly have some very strong hands. But if you don't expect him to check that many kings or better, then betting our king no kicker is better and has more EV. Quite enough. Let's see, we are certainly going to open it. And let's see this is check off in a full fish table. That's sweet. 
Could have been a worse flop for our Queen 10 uh, versus a regular we can bet pretty big on these kind of boards. Could also read the flop sometimes versus good players. <coughs> Just do that if you know your opponent is a good player. I know he is a pretty good player, so uh, I order it for that reason. I don't think it's optimal in general versus uh, a bad player or a bad regular because they will overfall to your overbet. Here we get a squeeze, of course we are very happy to see that, especially from a bad player, and I'm just going to make it 30, trying to get it in. Well, luckily he was not on our same line. Queen 8, we are definitely going to defend versus a middle position 2x open. Uh, we flop nothing, but sometimes I don't mind to lead out on a board like this, and that's what I will do here. I will also open the pocket wrist. Nice queen again, and 7-9 offsuit. Let's open this, I'll make it 3x, given the big blind. Small blank holes, and we flop a gut shot. Uh, it's a pretty good board for us. He shouldn't have that many kings in his calling range. So I am going to fire a Sibet, which is pretty standard. If he raises, it's going to be a bit suspicious. He knows me, probably saw me streaming on Twitch or things like this. So he might be doing some weird things. <laughs> Saying it's an art. And I am going to bet big on the turn. I missed the hand there. You shouldn't have jacks, you shouldn't have king 10 or 10s, so I'm, it should be pretty safe. And I'm going to bet also on the river. It would be super sick if he shows on us or things like this. Okay. I'm gonna open Queen Jack off. 3x, given that it's a big blind. Uh, everybody folds. Part 1 guy. Uh, looks like tight passive. I'm just gonna take a step here. Maybe I will continue on a king or a 10 on the turn. But yeah, he folded. And expect a lot of, a lot of folds from, from players like this 25, 4, and similars. 7 10 off is usually a, a fold, of course, but given there are two bad players and the price is so nice, I think I'm going to play that. We open the kings, 3x given the blind. I'm gonna call the first one and see on the turn what could be done. The river is not bad, uh, since it's less likely they have a 9. Uh, I'm gonna bet small, trying to get value from weaker 7s that they're certainly in the range, or medium pocket pairs that might call if they think I have a busted draw. <coughs> this guy is tanking a lot. Let's see. Nothing. He, will ju he just wasn't there. This guy is, and we are going. We are going to uh, forbid him. Pretty big. If he's a bad player. We also open a check, of course. And we couldn't flop better than this. <laughs> uh, I might also check this one. We, we dominate the board completely, which is it's going to be very tough for us to get value. Now I start betting because you know if he has a king or a queen, uh, he's never gonna fold. But yeah, it was, it was difficult to get value there. Not much to do, to be honest. Queen 8 suited. I am going to defend versus the button open. We flop a pretty nice board. I am going to check all this one. 
the turn is nice. I mean, if you have kings and aces, it's probably gonna be a cooler. And I am going to call. And also check call on the river. Unless he shops. If he shops, I'm just gonna fold. <coughs> on those kind of boards, like there, where there were three trips on the board, when a recreational player just overshoves, it's usually the, the, the quad. <laughs> Or the higher full house with pocket queens, maybe. King seven. Let's see if we can defend versus one of these guys. Yeah, button opens. This mob line, what it does, it goes, we call again as well. Bad board, just gonna be a check fold. Not much to do there. Let's isolate here. I would just make it 3x given the limper has only 30 big blinds. If he was deeper, I would make it 4. Just because I would lose less those times in which he just limp shoves his small stack. We have a gas shot, but we are in a 3 way pot and I don't think I have full equity. Plus, it's likely that he might have a pretty wide chuck shoving range, which I don't want to see. Uh, so I'm just gonna check back and try to, to get my straight. Yeah, I get my straight, but it's an okay turn. It improves a bit. I mean, gives me at least uh, an open ended. And I'm gonna check back. We hit a seven, which is fine. We also open queen 10 suited. We have a small tribute from this guy. Uh, we may do many things. I think uh, calling is okay. I'm gonna check fold here. Check hold, but none. Good flop, I mean, good with the seven. Let's check all the flop and see if our hand improves. It does not. Uh, I'm probably gonna check fold, I don't have awesome blockers. I block his main bluffs, probably. It's also gonna depend a lot on how big he bets, eventually. We should bet big here, if he bets. And the river is nice, uh, we may place a small bet, I don't mind. He's not gonna raise me with jacks, queens and kings, but he may value bet bigger, so I prefer to bet small and just get call from north, from those. And plus, he might call now with nines, eights, things like this, if he was c betting and he took cards on the flop. If he raises, I'm just gonna fold. He might be bluffing, but I don't think it's a line that they're bluffing enough. So uh, I'm just gonna fold if he if he does. Nice. Ten jack suited. We are going to open in three x given the big blind. We got a cold call. He might be a bad player on it. He hands he played pretty loose, and also uh, he has a big gap between VPP and PFR. He checks back, the king hits. Uh, I mean, sometimes we may start bluffing here. I don't mind backing twice. If you check back, I think he probably has an, an ace or some mid pair, maybe threes, four, things like this. Um, or maybe he was, he was just trying to hit his hand. We'll see. Yeah, probably he just had two random overcards and was trying to, to get some free equity. Queen 10 off on the small blind and Jack Queen off on as well. Let's see if I can play any of those. Yeah, I can play this. I'm gonna fold this through betting. It's probably a bit to lose versus unknown. I'm gonna check my <coughs> my gut shot and overcards. It's a good hand to check all with. Uh, the turn is okay, <laughs> good and bad, let's say. Uh, I'm gonna check all typically. And on this river, we may both bet like one blind or two or check. I like, I go for the check. I mean, I have very few value to get, I think. And he has seven in his range for sure. He overbets, which is pretty weird. Um, I don't think the average bet player is bluffing enough when, when he takes this line. So I'm just going to fold my, my bluff catcher. Looks suspicious, but again, 
when we see some weird line, it's at this stage is more likely it is weird value rather than a weird bluff. We play a screen and we get two call calls from two bad players, which is a good news because on this board, if they have an ace or a throw, they're not gonna fold. Meaning that I'm going to bet big and try to maximize my value. This guy calls pretty quickly, so either he has a draw or he has a key an ace. And in both cases, I think it's just better to shove here. Let's see, if you're thinking, maybe it's a bit more of a near of a draw, but let's see. It's okay also a little bit smaller here if you want to play it in three streets, but yeah. I think there are many scary cards for him if he has an ace, so yeah, probably it was slightly better to bet small, like 12 and giving me a better, an easier call with all his range. He has the ace. I'm actually surprised that it thought that much because I think uh, a bad player, I, I thought a bad player would instantly call me with that. I give up here, I don't think it's gonna fold at this point. Let's open this, ace deuce. And also, let's open this a7. Gonna bet small here. And here versus an unknown, I like this bet as well. It's an okay turn, I don't mind betting small, trying to get to a cheap river. And I will do the same here. Versus bad players, I like to bet to play out of position to bet small with draws because, you know, it's a good way to, uh, to get cheap equity, let's call it. And here I'm just gonna check fold now. No need to do anything else. Too bad. If a club would hit, it would be a, it would have been a nice, <laughs> nice one. And also, you see, when, when you bet small, sometimes they also fold. So that's that's pretty good for us. I normally do not open this hand, but you know, the big play, the big blind, the big blind is a bad player. We have a tight player on our uh, on the middle position. So uh, I'm gonna widen my opening range a lot in these situations, and I don't mind to do that. Uh, big blank calls, which was kind of our goal. I'm going to see with this kind of dry board, I'm going to fire some turns, but when he makes it 2x, I'm just gonna fold. I just have one over card. No need to, to, uh, to, to put ourselves in those situations. I'm gonna sit out next big blind and recap the results of this, of this session. We are going to call the king 10 versus the uh, button opener, and we are going to open the ace 10. We're going to check, sometimes we can check raise this one, I wouldn't mind, if you bet small of course. If you bet big, I'm just gonna check fold. While here we are betting big, we have value, the board is connected, and he's a bad player, so we want to bet big with our value hands. Uh, as I said here, I don't mind sometimes raising. I'm going to fire again if our hands improve um, with a king or with a draw. I'm gonna check otherwise usually. And on the 6 is definitely a turn that I'm gonna check. Uh, we don't know if he's a bad player or a good player. Uh, if he's a good player, he knows that I'm not raising a 6 here, so it's not a good turn. But he certainly has some 6s which are gonna bet call on the flop. Checks back, so he probably doesn't have a 6, but I don't think he checked back on the turn to fold. Uh, if he checked back, it means he has some kind of mid value. And this mid value is probably some queen or some ten jacks, things like this. And I'm not sure it's gonna fold them now. So I'm just gonna check. And let it go. Yeah, and jacks it was. Here's the session. So we had a uh, up and down, but we finished in profit, which is nice given the big stack we lost. And also the hand we lost, I think, the big, the big hand we lost, I think, is pretty much of a cooler. Uh, let's see it here just for a moment. So here we are, we have queens. Uh, recreational player opens, we chose to 3-bet, of course, he calls. This flop hits, I like to bet on the bigger side here uh, versus a bad player. Uh, maybe, well, yeah, I don't mind the sizing at the bad pot, to be honest. Might be okay. He calls the 5 uh I mean, just 6-7 got there, which I think is a small part of his range, doesn't change much, and I like here to bet, and I like to bet big because, you know, uh, he may have many sticky hands, he may have many throws, he may have pair plus throw, he's definitely not gonna fall that jack, so I think all in all it's good here to bet and bet big to maximize 
value, especially for the times that he is gonna call here with something like 910 and it's gonna fold on the river. This way we, of course, maximize our, our, our value. He calls the river is the nine, not the best, of course, but you know, the point is that queen 10 is the only real hand which got there, if you don't consider two pairs with the nine, of course. And I think uh, still he's not gonna fold the jack if he has one. He might be tempted to call now with something like 910, who knows? So I think uh, I don't mind to shove, you know, again, look how much is left. He has less than half the pot. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he, if he just calls with, uh, with 910 at this point. And again, he's certainly not gonna fold any jack. So I prefer the shove than the check call also because there aren't many busted draws to be honest, you know. If he had a draw, the draw now at least has a pair. So I don't expect him to shove on me that much in general with, with, with weaker hands. And I think he's also checking back a jack. So uh, I prefer much more here that invalid than the check call in this situation versus this player. But yeah, I mean, quite happy with the session, at least on how it ended. We, I think I played fairly good. I don't, I can't recall many mistakes, but you know, if you saw something which is suspicious so that you have played, I mean, if you see a hand that you have, that you would have played differently, just let me know in the comments. And please don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content and stay, let's say, up to date with my videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.